I am so excited because we're doing it again. We are combining two of my favorite things, thrifting and high-end dupes. I have got 10 amazingly quick, easy, and cheap projects with items you can find at any thrift store that you can make over really quick and get a high-end look on a super small budget. So stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIY and budget home decor content. I love helping you stretch your dollar further. We're gonna head out, we're gonna grab some stuff, we're gonna DIY, and we are going to make your home look like a million bucks. So come on, let's go. This first hack is gonna show you how to dupe these brass candlesticks. They are super high end and beautiful and we're gonna make them for a fraction of the cost. So for this one, we are just looking for items that are going to give us the shape that we want. So here I've got some plastic, some metal, a variety of 99 cents through $3. And I'm just looking for shapes that I like. I'm even gonna grab glass cause I'm gonna show you how you can make those look like metal. So we're gonna start with this rub and buff and that is going to allow you to get that really pretty shiny metal metallic look on even pieces like this plastic one. This metal one I'm just making from silver to gold and then this one I decided to add the kind of gold brass over the top just because I wanted the coloring to match. Now what about that glass one? I just used a little bit of spray paint in this color London Fog and that allowed the rub and buff to stick. It's not gonna stick as well as you want it to to just the glass, you're gonna have to pre-treat it, but that was a quick way to get it ready to take that rub and buff and I love that gray color seeping through underneath. This is a beautiful set. I made it for under $7 and I like to display them in odd numbers. So here I'm probably gonna do this set of three. They turned out so pretty and they're way cheaper than that $60 set that I took inspo from. And before we hop into the next project, a quick wit tip, you wanna make sure you clean everything you get secondhand. I like to use Dawn and hot water, soak them, and it will also help get rid of any of those remnants of your stickers or any kind of residue on there. These artisan texture vases have been huge. I've seen dupes for these all over the place in different DIYs. Today we are going to the glassware section and I'm just finding a fun shaped vase. I really liked the thin neck of the top of this one and we're gonna make it look ceramic versus the glass. So I went ahead and washed it and then I grabbed both some white and brown paint. I wanted to make a specific color of like off-white slash taupe that I was looking for. I didn't have that paint so I just decided to use what I had in my stash. I added brown a little bit by little bit until I got the color that I wanted. But if you have the color paint that you want, just go ahead and put that into your bowl. Then I am mixing in some baking soda. There's no science to this. I just sprinkled it on and you just wanna thicken up your paint. The thicker your paint, the more baking soda you're gonna wanna add, and that's just going to create a different texture for you. Now I'm just taking this, painting it right onto the vase. It is as easy as that. I ended up doing three coats to make sure it was fully covered, and those brush strokes are gonna look really pretty like this on your vase. Once it was dry, I was ready to style it. I put it with this tray and these books from Hobby Lobby. I absolutely love the texture, and it is a great way to add some height and depth to a display. This is my cardinal rule that I hold myself to. When you go to the thrift store, you need to put a box of donate into your car. Pass that on to somebody else so it can be their treasure. And you're basically doing a one in, one out system or three out for one in. It will help you feel better and you're not adding clutter to clutter. Now baskets are a great item that you can find secondhand at a ton of thrift stores and these two-tone looks are super duper trendy right now all over the high-end boutiques and different stores and here's how you can get that two-tone look super super cheap. First, go wherever you're going, garage sale, thrift store, even your own house, and find some baskets that you like. These are the ones I ended up picking up, but really you can do it with any basket, even if you've got like leftover Easter baskets from your kids. And don't worry if it has a handle because you can always remove it. Another awesome thing you can do with baskets like this is stain them relatively easily. Now to clean my baskets, I'm using a mixture of Mr. Clean and just some warm water. I am just lightly dipping it in there just to get it clean and then rinsing it off. You wanna be careful to not keep your baskets in the hot water too long because it's gonna loosen up the basket material. That's how they weave them in the first place. You will have grody water after the fact, but that's also just from the dye that they use for the baskets. And then put them outside to dry. Now for the handle of the one basket, I just grabbed my jigsaw and used it to remove the handle. I sanded off the rough patches 
And then I used a glue gun just to glue those pieces just because they weren't down fully because they were relying on that handle to stay where they were. So just use some hot glue to do that. Then for this two-tone look, I'm just using some painter's tape to figure out how high up I want my other color to go. I'm going to tape it around, try to get it as straight and as pushed down as I can. And then to cover the top to keep it that kind of wicker or basket brown color, I'm just using a little bit more painter's tape and a just plastic baggie to cover the top so then that way you won't have any spillage. I'm going to repeat the same thing with this apple basket. I think this is going to be awesome for fall decor, but I could use it year round. I'm just taping right above that ledge that it already has and then doing the same bag trick to cover up the top because I'm going to keep that the natural color. Then for my third basket, I had to do a little bit of operation on it, just some hot glue, making sure all of my little pieces stayed. And then I used some painter's tape to cover the top because I didn't have a bag big enough. Then for my large basket, I am going to do black two-tone on the bottom. I decided to do white on this one where I removed the handle. And then I used that London Fog color that I used before on my little apple basket. I thought that would be great neutral, but also helpful for fall coordination with that decor. Then when it's dry, just peel off your tape and your bag and you are good to go. Now these are great for traditional things like storage and organization, but they can also be a really great way to add texture to your overall decor. I'm popping in to make sure you are enjoying this thrifting video. If you are, go down and hit the like button. That lets me know you want to see more videos like this. And also be sure that you hit that little bell down by the subscribe box. Hit subscribe first if you haven't done so already. But hit that bell and it's going to let you know when I post new content. That's going to make sure YouTube notifies you and then you won't miss a future whiskey and whip video. Now this is one of the easiest DIYs in the whole video because you don't have to do much. I love glass hurricane vases. I love the thicker and taller ones for a variety of different decor pieces, but they can get expensive. So my Goodwill is always my go-to for these. You can find beautiful ones in different sizes, different heights. And also you can find leftover ones from weddings like this. All I had to do was pop off the burlap and it was ready to go. Now keep in mind that a lot of people donate their Dollar Tree vases. And so if it looks like thin glass, just be aware it could be a Dollar Tree vase and you could be overpaying for it. How I like to check is that if your bottom has a really thick piece of glass here, that's not Dollar Tree because Dollar Tree's glass at the bottom is thinner. So just something to keep in mind. I love these around Christmas to add some Epsom salt and make a snow scene, but for everyday decor, just add some greenery, make a grouping of an odd number of items, put it on a tray and you're good to go. I absolutely love this black and white first aid box that I saw on the Magnolia website and it is regular price over $60. So I decided to dupe it and headed to the Christmas section of my Goodwill. Now you may have these already at home or you can find them at garage sales, but you're just going to want a Christmas tin. I got this one for a dollar and I'm going to use some flat white spray paint to give it two thin coats just to make sure I cover all of that. So I've got a white neutral base to work with. I'm spraying the inside and the outside. So the whole entire thing is going to be covered in white. So the gold doesn't show through. Then I'm going to real quick measure it. And I decided that I wanted my cross for first aid to be four and a half inches wide. So I just went to Google images, search first aid cross, and I imported it into Cricut. I'm doing it as a complex image, making it a cut image. And then I'm going to cut it out by resizing it up in the top on my canvas here to four and a half inches. So it's the size I want. If you don't have a Cricut, you can do the exact same thing with the Google images. Just print it out in that size and then you can trace it and paint it with a black sharpie or black paint and then this is ready to go i'm excited to use this in the bathroom it's another one of those functional as well as decorative pieces you can have all your band-aids and things in there and it's easy to find when you need it which is a huge thing in our house in a prior video, I made some hand dipped ceramics and I love them so much. I wanted to show you guys how to make a vase that dupes this one that sells for over $75 at Pottery Barn. So for this, we're heading to either the ceramic section or the glassware section. And again, you're just looking for a shape that you like. Don't worry about the pattern, texture, anything like that. You just want a shape that you like. I'm going to do this blue vase and to my surprise, I pulled it out. It was yellow. Tags were half price this day, so only $1.50 for this one. It was a great find. I'm going to start by spray painting two coats on the whole thing of flat white spray paint so I've got a neutral base to work with. Then to get this hand dipped look, I am taking some painter's tape that I put onto my leg a couple times just to get rid of the initial tack. And then I'm going to wrap it in just kind of a 
natural curve around the outside. Once that's stuck, I'm taking a plastic bag, just like I did with my baskets, to tape it down. And that's going to make it so you don't get any spray paint on the top part, because you want that to stay the white color so you have the nice two-tone look. I'm tucking and taping it down, and then once it's ready to go, I'm using this stone spray paint. It's got little flecks and pieces of grit essentially in it so that is going to make it look a little bit more texturized after one coat it wasn't the color that i wanted so i decided to go over the top with the london gray color and once i did one coat it started to look like how i wanted so i ended up doing two coats of that and the color was perfect so it was texturized but it was also the darker brown color i was looking for now when it's about halfway dry, you're going to want to peel off your bag carefully as well as your painter's tape. I don't like to wait till it's completely dry because the spray paint will then seal down your painter's tape and you will rip off all of the lovely paint you just applied. So about half to I guess 30 to 50% dry, go ahead and peel it off and then let it sit and dry the rest of the way and that will help keep your paint intact. Did one similar in a prior video and in our move it got broken. I was so sad about it. I wanted to make another one and I'm really happy with how this turned out. Pictures are something you can easily find at a ton of different places secondhand and this stoneware trend is really popular so when I saw this plastic one at Goodwill for only 99 cents I knew I had to make it over to make it look ceramic. It's the perfect size and with a toddler plastic is always best versus ceramic or glass if I can help it. Another trick is to use a cardboard box to be able to move your items around. I'm using a Wagner spray paint tent in this video. I will link that. It's from Amazon. And then you can also use a Lazy Susan to move it around, but I'm just using this box because my Lazy Susan is packed. Then we're going back and grabbing some more of that stone spray paint we used before. Just some really light sprays here to cover the entire thing with the texture. And I like the black flex in this one, so I'm going to leave it as is. One of the quickest and easiest makeovers, you just by looking at it would not think that it is a plastic pitcher. This is great for all different types of flowers, real and fake, because we didn't spray paint the inside of it. And it's awesome with colorful flowers or just some greenery. If you haven't guessed yet, I love vases in my house and this artisan vase trend with the dirty look has been huge. So I wanted to try it. I saw a couple videos on TikTok do the same thing. So I grabbed this glass vase for five bucks and decided that I was gonna try it. I started with a base coat of white and then realized I actually wanted black underneath it. So I decided to go over the white with the black and this ended up looking more the vibe that I wanted. Then I ventured outside, grabbed a little bit of dirt from the yard, and then I mixed it with some water. I made sure to take out any of the little rocks in there because you don't want that on there. You just want just dirt. You could use potting soil, whatever you have. It doesn't have to be fancy. I'm just mixing it up till I get a nice little mud, and then I'm going to rub it all over this black vase. This is a fun project to get dirty. You could also do this with kiddos carefully outside. It would be fun for them to help kind of make a piece of decor for the house. Then you're going to let it dry and you're going to see it switch from the wet mud to the dry dirt. And then I just buffed it out with both a wet and dry paper towel to get the exposure of the black that I wanted. This is totally customizable. You can have it be as dirty or as not dirty as you want. I really like that it is just peaks of black, but you could easily wipe like a lot more off of it. Like I said, totally up to you. I mentioned earlier that I love hurricane vases to buy and use as is, and here are some more of my favorites in that realm. I love anything wood, especially wood bowls and vases. This vase was under $4. I absolutely love it, and it goes really well with some of the other pieces that I DIY'd. If you don't have a ton of time to DIY everything, it's great to pick a couple good DIY items and then fill out with other things. So like this amber glass. I love any amber glass vessels I can find. You can use them as vases or just as kind of like little apostles carry jars in your setups. Now this white kind of milky glass ceramic is really making a comeback in the boutique style stores and you can usually find a decent chunk of milk glass items at least by me and so I grabbed this little bowl. It's perfect for these little faux tulips. Great for a little tiered tray setup. I love the details and the white makes anything around it pop. 
Now, if you're into farmhouse or modern farmhouse, any type of crock is awesome to get on sale. This one I got half off, so it ended up being $2 total. I love that it has a lid because I could leave it on or take it off. And for this setup, I decided to take it off, fill it with these faux tulips, put it by a photo frame, and it was a really quick and easy vignette. I was recently checking out Anthropology site because I like to check it out for inspiration, especially for some unique quirky things. And I was checking out their frames and artwork and I fell in love with the look. So while I was at the thrift store, I went to their photo section. I had to do a decent search, but I found some awesome frames that I thought were just similar enough that they could look kind of like a set, but they were different with their own character. I grabbed things like these mirrors because I was able to pop them out. After I looked at the back, they were just like regular frames. And I also grabbed some of these that kind of gave me 80s and 90s vibes, but they had floral around the outside and I thought they were going to work perfectly. And then finally I grabbed this one, which just had like a silver metal around the outside. Step one was to give it a quick measure so that I knew what size to print out printables to put into the frame. Now it's all gonna vary based on the frames that you pick up. So you're gonna wanna make sure you measure your own frame. Before I printed stuff out too, I went through with some more of that rub and buff and I changed the silver frame to gold. It was a really easy process. There were more gold accents in the ones that I bought than silver and I was going for a mix and match set. Then per usual, we're doing whiskey and wood printables because you guys know I love printable art. Here's a quick hack on how to print them for your size frames. You're gonna go to Google Docs and insert your image on a brand new page. I like to go up here to the top, click image options and then size and rotation. Over here, you can size change. So say you want it to be 4.5 to fit your frame. You can either lock or unlock your aspect ratio. Use this little dot to spin stuff around if you need to fit more items on to one page. And then if you want things to stay where they are, I like to do the line of in front of text here and then fix position on page. You can move it and it will stay where you want it. So that's how I print some of these smaller ones on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And it's gonna be the right size for your frame. After I had everything printed out, I went ahead and cut everything out and then I put them in their respective frames. These gold square ones got some beautiful rustic square images. This white one is a fun little old school stamp image. I added some fun floral watercolors to this one. My gold frame got a fun kind of Key West inspired image to remind us of our trip this summer. And then finally I made this Illinois postcard kind of stamp one and I like that it's a nod to Illinois because that's where we live. These were so quick and easy to put together. I really only had to technically DIY one of them because I liked the look, but you could easily spray paint these, do whatever you feel to make them look like something that would go with your decor, but also add some fun personality into the mix. That's gonna do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I love doing these thrifting videos. I have one that I did Kirkland's dupes earlier in the year that has recently picked up steam. So I know a lot of you found me that way. So I will link that down below. Subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future video and I will catch you in the next one. Happy thrifting, bye.